Hi, I'm Arturo Salas. I'm a scientist here in the verification group of Synopsys, and I've been involved in uh, the drafting of several of the standards, the system error the IEEE 1800, the UPF, the 1801, and, and several other standards. And uh, I'm here to talk about uh, real number modeling, in particular the evolution of uh, real number modeling. So let me just start by going back to the past and talk about uh, what we have in Verilog, and we've had it for quite a, a bit of time. Uh, few people know that you can actually do some analog or real number modeling in the language directly. This is something that has been supported for a decade or more. Um, this is a, a module A that has a port of type real. Uh, and you could write things like that. Uh, there were several limitations in that a real was considered a variable, a state retention element, and not a wire. It's not just an interconnect, but it actually stores the value like a variable. Um, this is something that you could do for a long time, and there's some quite useful things that you can do. If you have a single driver that connects to multiple readers of the signal, the fact that this is depositing the real value, overriding the variable, if you think, every time it changes, is inconsequential. You can actually model this as a real number. Each of these would see the change, and it would work out fine. Uh, the limitation is that, of course, it's not a wire, so you can't have multiple drivers. The moment you do something like this, the language will accept it, but then you're going to end up with the last right wind semantics. Whichever one of these drivers is active last will deposit the value. Uh, and if you have something like this guy puts 5, and then sometime later this guy puts a Z out there, you would want to think of a resolution that says 5 and, and tri-state yields 5, but that's not what's going to happen. The entire net becomes a Z. So this is very limiting, very restrictive. Uh, and you, you cannot do anything that has anything more than a driver. With real number modeling, it is common that you have more than one driver. So what has happened is that the uh, AMS committee created an extension to this. They came up with a W real, which stands for real wire. So the intent for the W real is really to address these limitations and to bring back a real number type that can actually be resolved by the language. So it brings back resolution. The W real has, uh, creates disciplines and it creates a few uh, limited number of resolution functions that are quite common. You can use them for modeling uh, current or, or voltage. Uh, there's no way to create your own user-defined resolution function it's all limited by what the language provides. Now you may be wondering why are we doing all of these things and the answer is performance. Uh, it is the case that you can have a complete solution with having a design that you divide it up, you have your digital and your analog block with information going in either direction and you can partition this and run all of this in a SPICE simulator and run all of this in VCS, some sort of digital simulator. Uh, this works, and it's a complete solution. The problem is that uh, a spy solver is way too slow for many applications. And this, the entire system, the throughput, will be limited by the speed of the slowest, which is the spice engine. Uh, for some things, this is adequate, and it is a complete solution. There's automatic injection of converters between the two abstractions, and it works just fine. There's also fast spice engines. There's also Verilog AMS, which is a continuous solver, but faster than spice, typically 100 times faster. But in today's systems, people need even more speed. Uh, take uh, today's SOCs, where something like 85% of them have some content of mixed signal. So it's becoming more prevalent and important. But the bulk of the design is what we call big D little a. There's, there's a huge amount of digital content and a couple of analog blocks that you want to model the context of those analog blocks within that big digital system. And the digital system is going to have typically 
one or more processors executing software running in the you know maybe gigahertz or half a gigahertz uh, whereas the analog clocks are going to be slower typically maybe in the tens of kilohertz or hundreds of kilohertz so this speed dichotomy means that to get any coverage on the analog side you're going to have to run the digital for millions or maybe even billions of cycles that puts a big pressure on the system and you just don't have enough time you're going to have to go to faster simulation modes and real number modeling is one of the ways to go for example a uh, analog to digital converter 16-bit resolution will run something like 10,000 times faster when you just do it in a real number modeling uh, what does real number modeling also offer? well it gives users back control to trade accuracy for performance a uh, typical uh, thing that we use is the trapezoidal approximation. So if your analog system has some behavior modeled by that uh, waveform, I can break this up into some time deltas, which need not be the same in, in time, and just create little triangles and approximate that way from you can over or under approximate it. This one looks like it's a big one there. Um, and to compute this, you just need a couple of additions and multiplications. It's really very fast. So this can keep up with the speed of the digital system. And by making these things bigger, you lose some accuracy, but it runs faster. So you take complete control over this. This is the advantage of real uh, number modeling. It really is all about performance. And it really is training accuracy for speed. Now, as I mentioned, Double Real does allow you to model uh, wires carrying information, multiple drivers. There's some predefined resolution functions. And that sort of works reasonably well. Uh, in fact, that's what most people are using today. But there are some problems with uh, Double Real, or I should say some limitations that are becoming more problematic. Uh, one of them is that it carries only a single real number. If you want to model something a little bit more complicated, then you, you're out of luck, really. You have to do something differently. For example, what a lot of people want to do is they want to model a feminine. You create a feminine model for one of these wires, which is characterized by a voltage and an impedance. These two numbers completely characterize the DC behavior of that signal. Uh, but it requires two numbers, voltage and impedance. Now, you could do it by adding additional ports and keeping them in sync, but that becomes a little bit problematic now you don't have a single port. So from your netlister uh, perspective, what will be a single wire now becomes two wires, and it becomes really messy. Uh, what you really want is to have a way to encapsulate all of the components that you're using to model a, a wire or analog block uh, in a single connection or a single wire. So that's one problem with uh, WREL. Another uh, smaller problem is the fact that the resolution functions are limited and you can't create your own resolution function for something that is a little bit more interesting than that. Uh, there's a third problem and that is in the way in which uh, it is defined. It allows people to connect logic blocks with uh, WREL blocks uh, there's a conversion that happens automatically or semi-automatically but there is a coercion that requires that blocks that simply connect to that if this wire was you know, electrical and this was digital it's going to go and coerce everything in the connectivity list to become a electrical and then just leave some of the digital blocks hanging out uh, that requires the system to after you've compiled everything and you're doing elaboration to do connectivity tracing and change the type of something. So if you're in a scheme where you are compiling things separately, which most modern systems use to get incremental compiles, uh, that will break. Because now you need to do a global connectivity analysis and change what you've compiled before. Uh, so that's a, a problem that it represents. It's not a fundamental problem, but it's the way it's designed to be and people have relied on this uh, for correctness. And the final problem is what has been happening in the last uh, decade or so, 
is that low power has become more and more important and more prevalent. In fact, I think almost every design today pays a lot of attention to power. And the way we handle this is by creating different power domains to do voltage scaling. Uh, it is not uncommon for today's systems to have hundreds of power domains and, and maybe millions of power states. So the scope of this has grown. And with Unreal, there isn't a built-in mechanism to handle these things. It's sort of moved into user space. The way you have to do it in Unreal Let's say that you have created in this scheme three different power domains. So this is going to be V1, V2, and V3. Now these voltages could be the same, could be changing. Uh, you don't know, they're just different domains that may be switched on or off. And the way you have to do this in the W real regime is to create different type of logics or disciplines, call them whatever you want, right? I call this one logic one, logic three, logic two. And in addition to that, you have to create uh, connect rules that will specify which connect module to inject one between this and this, one between this and this, and one between those two. In addition, you'll have to pass the supply information to the connect module, which is done in the form of parameters. Now, if you think about it, in a UPF scenario, you have already connected your supplies to each of the blocks using UPF. That information is already there in the design, and you have to manually replicate all that information by creating different logic types, and then re-specifying all the supplies as parameters to the connect modules. Uh, needless to say, the parameters are constant, so if you have a voltage scaling solution, you just can't model it this way. There may be other ways to do it, but none of them are straightforward. Bottom line is that with a UPF scenario, when you have uh, low power, multiple voltage islands, and you have analog blocks, and all of these are in different blocks, this becomes very error prone and extremely tedious. It's a lot of work, and people are really asking, can you give me all of these things in some automated form? So the natural evolution from real to doubly real has led us to what uh, we call now net types. And this is a new construct that was added to the system variable language in the 2012 uh, release. This already exists and is supported by, I think, all of the vendors. Uh, what net type allows you to do is to create your own abstraction for uh, a net. Uh, it doesn't need to carry a single real number. It can handle anything. It can carry logic, real, arrays, structs, anything. You can combine into that. It's a new type, and it's unbounded. And it also allows you to create your own resolution functions. So user-defined resolution functions to handle something like a Thevenin or an Orton equivalent. It's, it's easy to do this, uh, but you can do that with a, with a net type. Now, the NetApps were originally designed with a couple of limitations so that we get the basis right and then grow it, uh, eventually enhance it. Uh, one of the limitations is that net types today can only connect to what we call interconnect, which is a generic typeless connection used to model just connectivity to a net listener or to other net types, identical net types. You cannot mix and match. So, in this scenario, if these two were different net types, today that is an error by the uh, LRM. Um, this is going to be uh, removed, of course. There was a limitation just for that thing. Now, once you allow multiple net types to be connected together, you need a mechanism to convert or adapt from one representation to the other. And, and these are called adapters. Uh, this is going to something that we're working on uh, right now in the committee. Uh, and probably will be finished in a couple of months. Now, adapters are interesting because they have this notion of what we call MAR, or the master representation, or most accurate representation. And it allows you to adapt from any net type to this master representation. Typically, that's the electrical one. And then bring it down to all of the other representations, including logic. Now, when you convert to logic, you may need voltage information to figure out which are your thresholds for conversion. 
either back and forth. Uh, and we envision that we can get all that information from the UPF information that's already specified. So no need for connect modules, no need for uh, repeating the same information. It will all be done automatically by the tool. You need to supply your net types, your resolution function, and in the case of uh, multiple net types, you may have to do the adaptation to your own uh, net types. But this is something that users want to do. You would only do this once. The rest of the system will take care of uh, automatically. I should also add that there is sort of a migration path to go from WReal to NetTypes. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the vendors have something like that, but we certainly provide a WReal NetType. So if you were using WReal, you can now start to use a WReal NetType, which is in a package. Uh, it's almost uh, indifferent to you, and your code looks the same but uh, you're not using the net app. So that can be enhanced in the future. So let me just uh, conclude by saying that, you know, performance is what's driving all of these things. You want controllability, you want predictability, you want scalability, and you need to run at very high speed. So that's a sort of led to the evolution from real variables to W reals and what is now a net type. Um, our hope is that uh, in, in the future, we'll be able to do all of the modeling using NetType, so shifting some of the work to users, and we will be providing some standard NetTypes that are commonly used. Uh, voltage, currents, these sort of things are handled directly. Uh, in the future, I think that this is going to be the solution to go. This is where, where, where we are starting to head.